Now, would you look with me in Luke chapter 2 and look at verse 8, if you would. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph, and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them. The grass withers, the flower fades, God's Word abides forever. By His grace and mercy, may His Word be preached for you. Please be seated. My guess, I don't think it's a wild guess, my guess is that you, like me, have family memories associated with Christmas that are pretty significant. I know we have them, and I've been blessed by them throughout my life, remembering them and trying to replicate them. Well, one of them was, as I was growing up, our home in Charlotte, North Carolina became the focal point of the family gathering for Christmas. That meant Grandmother Henry and Grandmother Mary of my mother's dad and mom, Grandfather Harry Sr. and Lois. That meant um, my dad, my mom, my three sisters, Amy and Beth and Vicki. That meant my mom's sister, Peggy, her husband, Bobby, the children, Kathy and Karen. That meant um, uh, Uncle, Lo- Uncle Lonnie and Aunt uh, Marion. That meant Uncle Otis and Aunt Donna. That meant Betty and Paul. That meant Diane and Don. And uh, usually some other cousins would try to work their way in because my mom was a great cook. And we would be there. Now, eventually, after everybody got there from all the places that they came for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, eventually, probably at the Christmas Day meal, when it was over and everybody was sitting back, particularly the men would look at each other and say, how did you get here? And there would be a conversation, well, I took highway such and such, and then I went over to interstate such and such, and then I uh, turned off to such and such, and... uh, and there was always these questions, well, what road did you follow? What highway did you go? What way, what was the way that you took to get here? And usually after that would be, well, how are you going to go back? Are you going to go back the same way that you came? As I was thinking about that, I was thinking that is just a, I was sitting there this last week looking at the various rehearsals for tonight. And then as I walked through the 14 live scenes of the nativity for the walkthrough, walkthrough, I I couldn't help but think about all of the people that made their way to the birth of Christ. How did they get there? How did they go to Jesus? And then how did they go for Jesus? Jesus after they had come to Jesus? How did they get to him? Then how did they go with him and for him? Mary, Joseph, and for today, the shepherds of the field, the wise men from the east, how did they get there? How did they come to this Jesus in this place at Bethlehem where he was born? 
And where did they go and how did they go when they left there? So I thought we'd take a few moments to look at that in our, you know, we've had this nativity study where we've looked at these couplets of people that gather. So we've looked at, uh, we've already looked at the angels that gather, Zechariah to Mary, Joseph, Zechariah to the shepherds. Then we took a look at um, Mary and Joseph last week, two, two descendants of a forgotten line of king. And then, uh, and then um, this week, we're looking at the wise men from the east and the shepherds from the field. Next week, we're going to take a look at two more there in the manger that nobody seems to think much about. And that's the Spirit of God and the Word of God. And then we'll finish up on Christ Sunday with Simeon and Anna. But today, these shepherds of the field and these wise men... Uh, and let's, let's, let's look at it the way I mentioned. How about the shepherds of the field? We'll look at them first. What was the way? How did they get to Jesus? And what was, the, what was the way they went after they got to Jesus? What was the way that they went with Jesus and for Jesus? Now, shepherds, remember, let's, stop, let's, let's define this. Shepherds of the field shepherds of the field in that region. Did you see that opening, that opening line? Shepherds from that region. What's the region? Well, it tells you in the text. It's Bethlehem. Or as we sing in the hymn, David's royal city. It is in that place where we have these shepherds outside of that city in the fields that are there. Now, these shepherds would be Jewish. And they would not be considered trustworthy. You're at the bottom of the rung of the social order found throughout Israel. In fact, a shepherd was not even allowed to give testimony in a court. They were determined as untrustworthy. Yet, if we stop and think, Shepherds in the field outside of Bethlehem. Does that sound familiar? This is the hometown of who? David. King David, who began as a what? A shepherd. Where? Same fields. Here these shepherds are in the occupation of the forebearer of the one that is being born in Bethlehem, Jesus, who comes from the line of David. Look at the Matthew, look at the Matthew 1 and the Luke 3 genealogy. This is the one that comes from David. This one that has come from David, the king of glory, came through the line of a king, and that is King David, who was in the same fields where these shepherds find themselves. In other words, they have the same occupation and the same location as King David. More than that, they have the same occupation for the one who is being born in their location, and that's King Jesus, who is the what? Great shepherd who will lay down his life for the sheep. Yet in the eyes of the world, these shepherds, they're meaningless. Uh, they just kind of fill in something that needs to be done. Bethlehem had a lot of sheep there because Jerusalem, where you would do all the sacrifices, was only seven miles away. And so that was a place that you would have them. And so there they are, untrustworthy, at best filling a slot in the, uh, in the demographic of the nation. But um, this Jewish part of the population was, these were the down and outers. But what's really interesting is how did they, how did they get to Jesus? They got, somebody came and told them. Who came and told them? God sent angels to tell them. 
Well, he sent an angel who was then backed up with a choir of angels that was a significant testimony from the host of angels. Now, it wasn't all of the angels, but there was a, a number of angels who came as a host from the myriads of angels to join this angel who begins with this statement to them, do not be afraid for I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. Here is a unique experience. Angels come and speak. This is the third time God has broken silence. Zechariah, Mary, Joseph, I'm sorry, the fourth time, and now the angels to these shepherds. And as he speaks to them, they are afraid. Now, notice what it says. Look, go with me to the text. And the angel said, uh, and um, the, well, let's look, go to verse 9. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. That's a tough thing to translate. I, I really love the King James translation here. Does anyone remember it? They were sore afraid. Pastor, what does it mean to be sore afraid. Do not step on my foot. It is surgery sore. Walk through nativity. Thursday night, I'll never forget the young boy that came running up to Pastor Reader and planted his cowboy boots on top of my foot. It was the greatest proof I have had in 20 years that I'm saved. <laughs> 20 years ago, I'd have grabbed his legs and made a wish, but uh, <laughs> sore afraid, sore afraid. In other words, when something sore, don't touch it. You recoil from any contact. These angels have come. The glory of heaven has now descended into the fields of Bethlehem that David had one time occupied to announce that one greater than David, King Jesus, is being born right there, and the glory of the Lord arrives. And they are recoiling. And the angel says, don't be afraid. Because he's got a unique message. The unique experience is followed by a new, unique message. I bring you the gospel. I bring you good news of great joy. The gospel brings great joy to those who hear it in their heart and come to Christ. Those who come to Christ, come to Christ with great joy. And when they've come with great joy, because they've come to Christ who came to them, they've come to the one who came to them and for them, and in this unique announcement, we have a birth announcement unlike any other birth announcements. My goodness, all the children we have here, I praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for all the young couples, all the children that are adopted or that are given birth or the various ways that this congregation has the opportunity to minister to covenant children. But when they come, what usually happens? We have a birth announcement. But this birth announcement, I'm deeply appreciative to my uh, professor in Westminster, Dr. Ferguson, and his insight on this. It's, a birth, it's, it's framed as a birth announcement, but unlike any birth announcement. Most birth, most, birth, most birth announcements, how? We announce, born unto Jim and Sally is a boy, seven pounds, two ounces, 18 inches long. Would you celebrate with us? 
would you enter into our joy? But not this announcement. It doesn't say born unto Mary and Joseph. He says, I bring you good news of great joy. For this day, in the city of David, a Savior has been born. I bring you great news, good news of great joy, and this is something you ought to relish for all the people. Unto you is born this day. Mary and Joseph, the adopted father and the appointed mother, praise the Lord. But this baby came to you, one of you, for you. Great joy. Who is this baby? Well, we don't put the weight, we don't put the height, we don't put the length. What we say is this. He is Christ, the prophet, who is the fulfillment of all the word, who is God's final word, who is the word in flesh, the priest, the one who will bring the sacrifice for our sins, and he who needs no sacrifice will be our sacrifice. This priest, the anointed offices, prophet, priest, and king. He's the prophet, he's the priest, and he is the king that has come to this stable to be born for all the peoples to get good news that brings great joy and good news that brings great joy because he has been born unto you. And so he has, been, he has come to us and for us. How did they get to Jesus? They got a message of good news from messengers who brought the good news. And then as soon as they heard, they, they see, how did they get, the, the phrase you've got here is this. It said, they said this. Here's what they said after the, after the angels went away. When the angels went away, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. It was the Lord through the messengers bringing his message that he's made known to them, a Savior is right here, and you're invited. He has been born for you, and you're invited to him. So they went, and they made no excuses. It says they went with haste. And when they arrived, they began to do four things. How, that was their way to Jesus. What was their way for Jesus and with Jesus? They go away telling everybody. They go away telling everybody what was told to them about this Jesus. Good news, he is the Savior for all the people. They go away telling people, and they go away praising God. And we're, So they're praising with worship. They're telling as witnesses of Christ, and they are full of joy. They, literally, this is so hard to translate. It says they're rejoicing in their joy. And as they're rejoicing in their joy, they go away, and these people are now changed. They're worshipers, they're witnesses, they're full of joy, and they're changed. And when they leave, everyone hears through their worship and their witness of what the Lord has done. But they're not the only ones that get to see Jesus. Sometime later, wise men from the east, don't know how many, we just know there's more than one. There's three gifts, so people have assumed three wise men. But they now come. Would you take your Bibles and go with me to Matthew? Go with me to Matthew chapter 2. What about their way to Jesus and then their way for and with Jesus? Notice what he says in Matthew chapter 2. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, the king, behold, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, now, after Jesus, Je Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. 
Now, from the east, think Iraq, Iran. Uh, go back a couple of thousand years. Think Babylon. Think Assyria. Think Medo-Persia. From the east, from the east, they've come to Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophets. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, of course, any time a king takes you in a private room to talk to you, particularly Herod, all Jerusalem was troubled with him because Herod would kill anybody and everybody that he didn't like or he thought was a rival. And so, and then he takes them into a secret room. Now, maybe they don't know all his reputation, but Jerusalem is, is troubled when he's troubled. And he takes them into a secret room, and he tells them, well, I found out where this, this child is. This child's in Bethlehem, according to the prophets. And that's where you'll find him. Now, when you find him, come back and tell me where he is, that I, too, may come and worship. Folks, I was going to say this later. Can I go and say it now? I, what? Too, may come and worship him. That means... Herod does what? Herod knows what they've come to do. What have they come to do? This isn't hard. Come on. Worship him. Do people know that you love to worship the Lord and that the Lord's day is precious to you? That becomes a witness in and of itself. He knows what they've come to do. They have hidden, they have a hidden agenda. We've come to him, and we've come to worship him. So he says, you tell me when you find him, so that I too may come, and that I too may worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that, had, that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place with, uh, where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced. There's that rejoicing with rejoicing. Rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. And so thus, that's what happens with the wise men. Now, who are these wise men? Well, we don't have Jews now. We have Gentiles now. We don't have down and outers. We got up and inners. These would be uh, part of the courts of a king. How did they get to Jesus? Folks, same thing. They got a word from God. But the word for God to them didn't come in a field. It came to them likely, this is speculation, it came to them hundreds of years before. In the archives of Babylon, Assyria, and Medo-Persia, where the word of God could now be found. Why? Because and the captivity of those in Israel was a man named Daniel. Men called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who became counselors to kings. They served for 70 years two different empires and five different dynasties. And Daniel was put over the wise men of those dynasties. Those wise men would have been educated, particularly in the area of astrology, by the way, 
And they would have had all of the wisdom that they could gather from around the world. That was their job, and to be ready for the king when he asked for that wisdom. Well, here's my speculation again. There's no way that Daniel, who was faithful to God's word, did not find a way to get God's word into the curriculum of educating wise men. And these wise men had been in the Pentateuch. And these wise men had made their way to Numbers chapter 24 and verse 17, in which through a prophet Balaam came a prophecy that a star for Jacob to declare the scepter, that's a king's ruling symbol of Israel, shall rise. That's why they called it his star, that they saw rise. Now, folks, please, I I know I've gotten the videos, I've gotten the articles about Mars hit Venus at this time and certain year and this year and that year, and and I appreciate all of those things, but listen, I've done my work on it. I don't, I'm probably not going to do it again, and I'm, I'm just a simple guy. I think this was like Jonah's fish. God just made it. God made the star. I don't need a conf a constellation of constellations to get me by this. I think he just made the star. It was his star. It had a purpose. It was his star. Just like that fish was Jonah's fish. This is his star. It rose, and it rose in a very unpatterned way to take them right to Jerusalem. Not to Bethlehem, take them to Jerusalem because God wanted them to get the message to Herod. And when God gets the message to Herod through them, they then get some more wisdom from God's Word. So they got God's Word from the archives of where they would have been educated, the prophecy of Numbers 24, 17. Now another prophecy that he would be born in Bethlehem, given to them by unbelieving wise men. You know, God's Word is powerful even if an unbeliever gives it to somebody. And God's Word then comes to them to lead them on, and then God reaffirms it again by bringing the star as it appears again, rises again, and leads them on the seven-mile trip down to Bethlehem. And there, these Gentile uh, who have come to worship find Jesus at Bethlehem. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you, he's not still in the we, we condense this for nativity scenes because we don't have two years uh, to keep you in the pew. Now, I'd, I'd like to keep you for two years in the pew while we do the nativity. I, Harry, when did this happen? I, my guess is sometimes three months to two years after, um, after the birth of Jesus. Uh, there's some time that's passed to the point that Mary and Joseph, you see what happened is they got there, likely there's a key word that's used for inn. It doesn't mean an inn, a commercial inn. It means a, a reserved room, like an upper room. Uh, that's why we've got it on, the, on our walk through nativity. You'll see the Cat- Catalumina, uh name for this room. It is a very special thing. It would have been a guest room, not a commercial inn, but a guest room. And they probably went to some of their relatives because that's where they're all from in the line of David. And as they arrived there, guess what? Everybody else for the tax season has come so they didn't have room. Hey, only thing I've got loose is downstairs. That's the way they would have built it. Here's a cave. They put a floor over the cave, and that's where you lived, and they created an upper room as a second floor, and that's where they would put their guests. And, uh, and, they, the, the, and the cave with the animal heat would heat up the, the room. And so they said, sorry, the only thing we got left is around underneath the cave, the stable, the manger uh, that's down there. You can use that uh, trough uh, for a crib, and you can go down. That's all I got. And so that's where they went. Well, by the time these, you'll notice by the time the wise men get there, they're back there in the house. The pressure of the tax season is over. They've got room, so now they're in the house. And now they visit with Mary and with Joseph. And they've come having been led by God's Word for hundreds of years through to Jerusalem and now to Bethlehem, guided to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And they bow and they worship. And from their treasures, they worship with their gifts. 
And then, it's such a translation. They rejoiced exceedingly with joy, literally. Their joy rejoiced in the rejoicing of their joy. Do you think they're trying to get across to us God's people when they get saved do what? <laughs> I, I'm going to give you all one more chance on that one. God's people when they get saved do what? Do you? Would anybody accuse you of being filled with joy that rejoices in joy exceedingly? Or me? Uh, you know, people say, well, Pastor, I'm rejoicing. Well, let, let your face know it. Let people see it. Shepherds do it. Angels do it. Pagan kings come and do it. I just don't think we should be above it. I think we need to get in on it. The Bible says that's how they got there. Now, where, how'd they go when they left there? Don't you love it? The Lord came in a dream. You remember Herod? He's about to start killing kids between three months and two years. That's why I, when they asked him, when did the star rise, they told him. Somehow Herod's hearing this, so up to two years of age. This has been some length of time, just not sure how much. But he's going to make sure he destroys this king, this rival, if at all possible. And you can be assured if these representatives of kings came back, they would have been destroyed too. But the Lord protected them. And the Lord sent, sent a dream to guide them in his providence away. And they went, notice, a, they went back a different way. And that's what happens to God's people. When they get saved, they get different, and the way of life becomes different. There is a different way. It was a way of worship, sacrificial worship. It was shown in their posture. They bowed. It was shown in their possessions. They gave sacrificially of their treasures. There was sacrificial worship. There was joy. There was a changed life. They went a different way. Their, not, their life was now a new way. Their life was an assured way, a secured way. Their life was a divinely guided way providentially. Their life went back to their own country to be worshipers and witnesses of the Lord back there, and the Lord sent them back a different way as different because of one that they had met and their difference was seen in their sacrificial worship their joy and the fact that they were now guided and when God spoke they followed we're not going back the same way we're going the way the Lord leads us for Jesus and with Jesus so let me give you let me give you some takeaways here very quickly first one is not going to be a shock E, 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 E. Everyone evangelizing, everybody, everywhere, every day. How do you get to Jesus? Now, folks, please listen to me. Please listen to me. I know we're at the, the magic moment, but listen to me. Nobody's going to get to God without the Word of God getting to them. And the message of God has to come through messengers. How did Mary get to this place where Jesus is? God sent a messenger with his word, and she surrendered. How did Joseph get here? God sent the message through a messenger, and he obeyed. How did the shepherds get here? God sent a messenger with a message, and with great haste they obeyed. How did the wise men get here? God sent his word through Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, unbelieving counselors of Herod. God got his word to them. Messengers got the word to them, and they got to Jesus. How did you get to Jesus if you're saved? Somebody, my guess, somebody's told you the Word of God that Jesus saves. 
good news of great joy. That's what God has called us to do with no discrimination. There's male and female at the nativity. There's rich. There's poor. There's up and inners. There's down and outers. There's Jew. There's Gentile. He goes to fields. He goes to palaces. He goes cross-cultural missions, foreign lands, to bring men and women to Christ from every demography of all of eternity, of all of life to bring to eternal life. I mean, I love it. I was, I was sitting there, 7,500 people and the 900 people that thank you so much for helping us do this at the walk through nativity. You know, 7,500 people. I was amazed at the unbelievable diversity of people we got to put gospel tracts in their hand, talk to them, who filled out cards that we get to follow up with them. I think of tonight and the diversity that might be here. But I think of all that is around me in this community that is constantly diversifying. And here is male and female and rich and poor and up and inners and down and outers. And here is all these ethnicities and everything that's there. So what should we be doing? We should be personally engaged in evangelism. Listen, brothers and sisters, walk through nativities, hallelujah presentations, um, lion, witch, and wardrobe, all of these wonderful ways for the corporate body to make a presentation to people. By and large, do not accomplish anything if you and I are not going to men and women and telling them about Jesus. And then go to them afterwards to talk with them about Jesus. It just becomes us having another blessing, which I'm all for. But I want to bless people with the gospel. I want people to know that Jesus Christ is the Savior of sinners. So I ask myself, why aren't we? And we're not. Now, we better than most, but that's not enough. Why aren't we, everyone, evangelizing, everybody, everywhere, every day? I've tried it all my heart and mind to try to think of why this is the case. I guess for some of us, it's just we're indifferent. And if that's the case, I need to ask you to forgive me. If you're indifferent to where people are going to spend eternity in, a, in the pit of the lake of fire called hell, If, that, if we're indifferent to that, I'll have to confess that maybe some have calloused hearts, but I've just got to confess perhaps I haven't said it enough or clear enough. People in their sins apart from Christ are headed to a righteous judgment of eternal condemnation. Can you be silent? Can I be silent? Or maybe we're fearful. Then I tell you, look to Jesus. Perfect love cast out all fear. Don't be fearful. These wise men weren't fearful. Shepherds weren't fearful. Their life was at stake. Don't be fearful. Well, Pastor, I just, you know, it's, it's embarrassing. Then don't be ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel. As I said the other week, call, join the company of the unashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But perhaps some of you are silent. I tell you this, not in accusation. I tell you this and I ask you this only out of a heart that longs for you to know Christ. Perhaps some of us are silent about Christ and have no joy because we don't have Christ. We've come to church but we haven't come to him. I plead with you today. Come to him. If there's any reason that you think is valid not to surrender by faith and repentance to come to Christ, I will take whatever time that you need to tell me your reason why you will not receive the gift of eternal life.
that saves you from your sins, that gives you the joy of the Lord, and that sends you away from hell to a new heavens and a new earth. Let me give you a second takeaway. When you decide to get involved in evangelism, you're going to be met by adversity. Herod brings some adversity. Satan brings some adversity. There will always be adversity to evangelism. It is inevitable that there will be adversity. But here's what I want you to know. God has the answer. God has the answer to all of that adversity. So come to Christ. The obstacle that I think is the biggest to bringing the gospel, the, the obstacle I think is the biggest to our sharing the gospel with everybody, everywhere, every day, is within us. May the Lord replace that by being within us. Finally, whoever comes to Christ always goes away a different way. You're never the same in your new life for Christ. You now got overflowing joy, unstoppable joy, unbelievable joy, a visible joy. People actually see that we rejoice with our joy. You got to change life. He rescues you. He redeems you. He renovates you. Yes, forget Joanne and Chip. Jesus doesn't do fixer-uppers. Jesus does a total renovation. He makes you into a palace for the king. You got joy. You've got to change life. You have the precious privilege of sacrificial worship exhibited in posture. We bow. Exhibited in giving sacrificially. Exhibited in joy. That is glorious and joyful. Finally, here's the last thing. You get to be a sanctified tattletale. Do you all remember tattletales? Do you still have them? You must not have tattletales in Alabama. We had them in North Carolina. I remember her. I'm not going to say her name. Sixth grade, tattletale. You know what a tattletale is? They're always telling on somebody. I was walking in the playground, sixth grade. I'm just giving you one time. She was a tattletale. She's now a friend of mine on Facebook. I can't believe it. <laughs> and I happened to see a dead rat, not mouse, rat. And I picked it up in my teacher's, my sixth grade teacher's car, who I had a secret crush on, does not compare to Cindy. I had a secret crush on. It was unlocked, and that rat deserved to be in that car. <laughs> well, the next thing I know, tattletale, went to Miss Green, I did it, and then I went home to get a note signed that I did it by my parents, and that was not a good moment. My dad had heard the sermon on don't spare the rod. He hadn't heard anything about time out. And uh, so, uh, so then it came, and uh, so I remember my now Facebook friend Tattletale. I'm asking all of us to be sanctified tattletales. That's what I'm asking. When people come up and, why do you have that joy? Why do you love to worship? Why are you so confident moving forward in life? You can tell them, Jesus did it. I'm telling on Jesus. He did it. I am what I am by the grace of God. In fact, he not only did it, he is it. He's my life. And he's the one that made me have him as my life. And he invites you, come to him. There's many people that Christmas Eve is not Christmas Eve until they've turned on the BBC and the King's Chapel at Cambridge University has its Christmas Eve service of lessons and carols. Do you know how it always starts? It always starts with Once in Royals, David City. The boys' choir comes out to sing it. And you never know, and they don't know, who's going to sing 
the first verse as a solo till they walk out. And as they're walking out, he'll turn to one of the boys. You sing. And they sing because they're ready. You never know when you get the opportunity to tell on Jesus. Be ready. He's my Savior. Good news of great joy. Let's pray. Just have the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. This Jesus whom we celebrate his birth has been born so that you and I can be born again. Pastor, I would like to pray with someone and commit my life to Jesus right now today. When we finish, there will be people standing up here that you can come and pray with about any issue, but about a commitment to Christ, they would love to spend moments with you. For those of you who've already come to Christ, just pray right now. How can I with the shepherds, the wise men, and the angels be a messenger of the message Jesus saves to the up and inner, to the down and outer, to the male, to the female, to the rich, to the poor, to palaces, and to fields. Jesus saves. They hear the rolling sound. Jesus saves. He was born that I might be born again.